So about nine months ago, I made a video on this Vizio 60 inch model E60. It had some failed LEDs. Uh, it, this TV is still working good, but that same recycle shop had another E60 60 inch Vizio also with LED issues. So let's take a closer look. Here you can see several dark bands. I'm expecting maybe even five failed strips. Looks like it's dark here. Maybe one or two here. Over here is dark. The bottom left hand corner is dark. So next to do is get the panel off and take a closer look.
So here we sure did lose about half of the strips. We have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bad strips. So there are a couple different ways to identify the bad LED. Uh, one way is to just power up the TV, but you'll have to film it because it happens very fast. But sometimes when it first powers up, it will raise the voltage high enough to arc across the bad LED, letting the rest of the good LEDs light up for just a split second. Second, uh, another thing you can do is use diode check on a multimeter. Uh, you will need to scratch through the, the solder mask and uh, see you can light up the good LEDs that way. This is the defective LED, so it is not, not going to light. There's another good one. Or you can use a 3 volt power supply and also uh, scratch through the solder mask. I'm using 350 milliamp LEDs, which can be found on eBay. So after you get done using the hot air to install the new LED, just clean off your flux. Test it. Here I'm using about 22 volts for the entire strip and it's good. So I can go ahead and glue the lens back on. So now with the failed LEDs replaced with new ones, we're all lit back up again. Now the smart thing to do would be to replace all of these strips. Uh, obviously these Vizio uh, E60 series have some pretty lousy LEDs in them. Uh, Shop Jimmy offers a kit to replace all 12 strips for about $80. So if you're willing to invest $80 in your TV, that'd be a smart thing to do is just get rid of all these. I took the uh, cheap and dirty way by just replacing only the failed 
LEDs, but there probably will be another failure somewhere down the road. It's just a matter of time before one of the other LEDs fail too. So here's the TV all reassembled. Uh, it works great. Everything's working fine. But one thing that I couldn't stop thinking about was, well, I was trying to measure the current uh, through the LEDs to decide whether or not I should use 100 milliamp or 300 milliamp LEDs. I noticed that while it was first turned on, was very first booted up, my current meter was maxing out on the milliamp range. Uh, this doesn't overload until about 600 milliamps. So under normal conditions, with the backlight turned up to maximum, it was pushing around 300 milliamps. But now to push 600 milliamps through 300 milliamp LEDs, it's no wonder they're burning out. Uh, I believe, I, I can't understand why they would want to jolt the LEDs like that with so much current when it's first turned on. So maybe that can be fixed through a firmware update, or maybe it has to be fixed through hardware, something to uh, clamp that output um, while it's first turned on for that split second. So the next time I have to take one of these apart, I'm going to take a closer look at that little turn on surge and see if that's something that can be taken care of. But hey, thanks for uh, watching.